the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Our beloved fathers, deacons, monks, nuns, our beloved faithfuls, those who are with us in this holy church and those who are watching us through live streaming, may the Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one in nature and one in essence, bless you, guide you, protect you and deliver you from the snares of the enemy, whether it be visible or invisible. Today, according to our church's calendar, it is the third Sunday of the Apostles' um, Lent or fasting. The Gospel of today is from St. Luke, chapter 10, verses 23 till the end of the chapter. So it's Luke, chapter 10, verses uh, 23 till the end of the chapter. There are so many precious pearls in these verses, but we will pick one and focus on that one, and that is the word mercy. So to sum up all those long verses of today's gospel with one word, it would be definitely the word mercy. Because the Lord Jesus was actually questioned and challenged to what, to somewhat degree by this lawyer who was well embedded into the law of the Old Testament uh, where he questioned the Lord, good teacher, tell me what shall I do to inherit eternal life? The Lord Jesus replied and said to him, how do you understand the law? How do you read it? He said, you love your God with all of your heart, all of your mind, all of your strength and all of your soul and you love your neighbor like yourself the Lord Jesus well do this and you shall live and then he tried to challenge the Lord furthermore by saying or asking the Lord who is my neighbor the Lord gave this parable about this man coming down from Jerusalem to Jericho. And on the way down to Jericho from Jerusalem, these robbers came to that man, they bashed him up, they stripped him naked, and threw him on the side of the road, bleeding to his death. And happened to be a priest coming down the same way, he saw that man on the side of the road and passed on the other side didn't stop the levite or the equivalent of a deacon in the new testament a levite came the same way coming down and passed by never stopped to help that man on the side of the road bleeding to his death and then the lord with this parable says but there was this uh, samaritan who came where that man was, did not mention the word came down. The word down was not mentioned when the Samaritan was invoked. And the Samaritan came where that man was left on the wayside and had showed compassion toward that man, showed mercy. He, he actually, um, he poured oil and wine on those wounds, bandaged that man up, put him on that mule, and took that man to the inn or the hotel, and gave two denarii or two dollars, two denarii to the inn, uh, to that person in that hotel, and said to him, "Spend all these two denarii on this on this man, and if you spend any." thing more when i come back again i'll pay you till the last penny and then the lord came back and he said which out of the three was the 
neighbor or showed compassion or mercy to that wounded man. He said, the third one, which is the Samaritan. The Lord then said to him, then you go and show mercy as well. We lack mercy or the act of mercy so much in our time and age. We lack the true act of mercy so much in the 21st century, our century. My beloveds, how can I gain Christ's love and mercy, since we're talking about mercy? How can I gain Christ's mercy? See, this lawyer who stood and questioned the Lord asked him, looks like there was pride in him because his question was altogether wrong from its roots. He shouldn't have asked that question in the first place at all because he asked the Lord this way, good teacher, tell me what shall I do to inherit eternal life? You see, if he was well embedded in the scripture of the Old Testament if he knew the law according to him and he said I have kept all these commandments I have loved God with all of my heart all of my soul all of my mind and all of my strength yet no one had kept the commandment of loving God wholeheartedly because if we had loved God wholeheartedly we would never ever have sinned the reason why Adam, our first father, why he sinned, for one reason, because his love for God was not wholeheartedly. Love God with all of your heart. You see, if Adam had loved God with all of his heart, he wouldn't have broken God's word. But looks like Adam's love was some for God and some for himself. And every time when the love for me surfaces up, I break God's word. I sin. Every time I love myself before God, I will definitely fall into sin. So he said to the Lord, good teacher, you should have read the scriptures thoroughly to realize one truth. The word good only applies to God and God only. No one qualifies to be called good except God. Because the scriptures do teach us there is no one good but God. So when this lawyer stood up and asked the Lord good teacher the Lord was literally saying to him are you calling me God by referring to me as good teacher you just called me good do you realize mr. lawyer that the word good only applies to God so are you literally saying I am God but you see when I looked at your lips you called me God but when I looked at your heart you saw me like you. So there is too much pride in you, my dear friend. So you were literally saying to me, I, Jesus Christ, you're a good teacher and I am a good teacher as well, like you. So you're trying to be equal to me. Well, I'm going to show you who you really are. What does the commandment say, the law? 
love God with all of your heart? He said, all right. You do this and you shall live. And love your neighbor like yourself. Do all of this and you will live. Then he said, he wanted to be a show off. He said, who is my neighbor? He said, your neighbor is the one that shows mercy to you. That is your true neighbor. Your true neighbor is the one who shows mercy to you. Now, when does mercy come into existence? In other words, when does mercy get seen as mercy through the eyes of God? When does God see an act of mercy done through us? The only time mercy is truly seen as mercy by God when you and I show an act of mercy to someone who has been nothing but a pain in our necks. Someone who's gone against you, someone who has hurt you, someone who stabbed you in the back so many times, someone who tried to make you fall, someone who has tried to ruin your name, your image, your reputation, someone who has become an enemy to you, yet you show an act of mercy toward them, then you are Christ-like on earth. You're Christ-like on earth. You see, if you show an act of mercy to someone who has been merciful to you, what have you achieved? Zero. Nothing. Your bank account is zilch. How much do you have? Nothing. Centerling payment, not paid this fortnight. Gone with the wind, baby, standing in Fairfield, waiting for someone to buy you lunch. Or maybe Liverpool, I don't know. Or maybe downtown, brother. So when someone is merciful to you, when someone is compassionate toward you, when someone is kind to you and you pay back the same, you've achieved nothing. But when someone who has been really an obstacle in your way, heavy burden, and you're still showing mercy, you are imitating your Lord on earth. But Father, are you, let me just try and fathom this. Are you simply saying to me that I have to be nice to someone who is not nice to me? Precisely, my child. But Father, I can't do it precisely, my child, because it takes God to do it through you. Anybody home? Next time, you're nice to someone who is not nice to you. No, Christ is in you. 100%. Without Christ, it is impossible for you and I to absolutely do such an act. Mercy. It takes God. So now, people have come to this piece of wreck and asked him, how do I know I am walking in the Lord's way? Because Father, you know, it's a lot easier to come to this realization what I am doing and which way I'm taking as far as the world is concerned. You see, it's very easy for me to know if I am walking in this way to get me to the city because I can read the signs I've got the navigator. I've got all the signs and all the ways in, right before my eyes. I know this way will take me to the city. This way will take me to this place and that place. But when it comes to God, there is no navigator. There is no 5G, 6G, 10G, BBC, KFC. There is nothing. With all the technologies, this technology is dumb. When it comes to God, there is no technology that can get me to God. And there is nothing in this realm that can prove to me beyond the 
beyond any any doubts that I am really walking in God's way in the Lord Jesus way so father can you please explain to me teach me enlighten me how do I know I that I am walking in the Lord's way I will say this to you my child are you able to show mercy to your enemy yes or no are you able to show an act of love to someone who has been nothing but a pain in your life are you able to forgive the one who has hurt you the most because the sign of mercy is forgiveness how do I know I have God's mercy in my heart when I am able to forgive the one who has hurt me the most who has stabbed me the most who has gone against me the most who has been nothing but an obstacle and a stumble and a stumbling stone in my way for all these many long years yet I have forgiven the one who hurt me the most then if you are able to forgive the one who is gone against you then my child God's mercy is well embedded in you therefore 100% you are walking in the Lord's way because if it wasn't for the Lord being really strongly and vividly clear in your heart in your life impossible for you to forgive someone who has hurt you so rest assured this is the Lord's doing therefore he is in you and with you be happy see my beloveds when we are able to show an act of mercy towards someone we are not doing them a favor we're doing ourselves a favor <laughs> So think about it this way always, because that's the truth. So when you say to someone who's been an obstacle in your life, you go to them or you send them an indirect message or on Facebook, <laughs> I'm going to ruin you on Facebook. Please don't do that. You are imitating Satan. You're imitating Satan. Be careful. Who do you want to imitate? Christ or Satan? Do you want to be in the light or darkness? Where do you want to be? You choose. It's your choice. But the consequences of that choice, not up to you. You have to pay for it. And you have to answer to that. So when, when you defame someone, when you go and talk about someone in the entire world to destroy their image, their reputation, you're imitating Satan. Then what goes around will come around. Now, but when you are showing an act of mercy to someone who has been an absolute hell in your life, you're imitating Christ then you're doing yourself a favor because my beloveds let me make this very clear the Lord Jesus may enter with you in a dialect about so many things and discuss them with you but the Lord Jesus will never discuss nor negotiate on uh, on one point called forgiveness he will never negotiate why because he will expect it from you it is mandatory for a Christian who calls himself a Christian follower of Jesus Christ Lord and Savior the Redeemer the King of Kings and Lord of Lords if you proclaim this if you profess and confess this that you are a follower of the Lord Jesus then the Lord will demand of you to be a forgiver and he will never tolerate it he will never accept it he will never bend it stretch it 
turn it around never he will come straight like a sword sharp he will say you did not forgive that person that hurt you why do you expect me i jesus to forgive you come on tell me give me one good reason why should i forgive you if you want your lord jesus to forgive you you must forgive those who have hurt you because my child do you want me to show you and remind you how many times you have hurt me i jesus christ do you want me to put you to shame i can do it very easily i can just reveal all your wrongdoings before you blink your eyes then let me see what you gonna do when i come for you what you gonna do when i come Yo, bro, yo, whoa. <laughs> King David says, from the throat to the mouth is a very short distance, but this short distance decides your destiny from the throat to the mouth is an extremely short distance but this short distance decides your destiny he says for as long as that word is in the throat you're turning it all over from every angle you're tackling it you're washing it like putting it in a concrete mixer or a washing machine so you're turning it all over around and your blood is boiling up because you want to throw that word like a spear, like an arrow at that person whom you are wishing to decimate. Mince them. So the word is in your throat and while it's in your throat, your blood is boiling up because you want to tell him off. But King David is saying, crush it thoroughly in your throat, crush it thoroughly in your throat because as long as the word remains in your throat nobody knows about it except God and you no one else he said the moment you throw it out too late brother the whole world has heard about what you just said you go back and say, oh, look, I didn't mean it. Oh, I was angry. I was... The damage is done. The damage is done. So, we need to think wisely. We need to think deeply. We need to think with patience. Don't ever rush into any decision. And speaking of decisions, let me say this to all of us don't ever a piece of advice for all of us i beg you don't ever don't ever make or take any make any decision i'll take that back don't ever make any permanent decision on a temporal situation don't ever make any permanent decisions on temporary situations and guess what everything in this world is temporary including us everything i'm temporary the table is temporary the building is temporary everything is why are you making permanent decisions on something that will change 100 percent Oh, no, no, that's it. Because I didn't marry Rachel, that's it. I will never get married again. Get a life, mate. There is millions like Rachel's. This is not the last one. Definitely not the first, nor the last. Why are you making this permanent decision and staying single for the rest of your life just because that Rachel who lived 10 houses down the same street where you lived, us in your portion get a lot look over here there is Elizabeth baby 
with nice purple hair. She's covering it now. If you're a Syrian, there is Surya. If you're French, there is Chanel. Oh là là, impossible. Vous êtes très joli. Comment ça va? Don't ever make permanent decisions on temporal things. Even those who are your enemy today, tomorrow, they well, they may well be your best friends. Don't rush into chopping people's heads. And I wrote on Facebook about this person. And I had on my Facebook 100,000 followers. And I told them everything about that person. And I said, there you go. And then I looked at him and I said, ha ha, I killed you. I distorted you. Now you can't even go out and face the world because I smashed you. Ha ha. The Lord is upset. Satan is happy. An act of mercy to the Lord is more than any other offering. What's the point I come to the Lord's house and pray, yet I have no mercy? What's the point I come to the house of the Lord and sing, yet I have no mercy? What's the point I come to the house of the Lord and I celebrate the Holy Mass service as a bishop, yet I have no mercy? I am useless, hopeless, I am zero in the eyes of God. He will hear me not, he will see me not, he will recognize me not, he will acknowledge me not, and he will say, I don't know who you are, get out of my house. But imagine someone comes to the world is nothing. Maybe he is a homeless person. To the world he is not much and all love and respect to the homeless people because they are my heart they are the brother the brothers of christ and i love them dearly and deeply i adore them but to the world they are not of great importance because they don't occupy some sort of a glamorous position but maybe that homeless person to the Lord is king and queen because they have mercy in their hearts. Wow, so foundational to our spiritual Christian growth to be merciful people. Believe you me, you want to see Christ? Be merciful. Ah, oh, you see this, it's a very weak analogy, but I'll try and say it. When I talk to you about mercy, it's that like, it's like when you go to a restaurant and start digging at those appetizers. You can stay there for hours, my beloved, try this snack, and try Baba Ghanoush, and try Tabule, and try I don't know what. You can stay there for as long as you want, trying all these appetizers. If you don't eat the main meal, what are you doing in that restaurant? Get out of there. You see, I can talk to you about mercy. You will never, we will never, we will never understand it until we ask the Lord to, through His grace, to help us live mercy. Live it. Wow. Man, I wish I could talk more. No time. What time is it? Maybe I have some time.
7.30. Oh, plenty of time. <laughs> I feel sorry for you. <laughs> I'll leave you with this. <laughs> the most precious gift you could ever ask for to be given to you is this. The ultimate gift. I'm talking about earth. The ultimate gift you could ever ask for it to be your portion is when you are at fault, you are guilty, and then the judge says to you, you are forgiven. Go home. When you're facing that judge in that courtroom, your life is hanging by a thread. Whether you are going to make it, or you're going to lose it forever. That hammer becomes so heavy, so big, so fearful. A moment, a blink of an eye that will decide which way I'm going, out or in for good. The judge says, I find you, Bishop Murray, guilty. Okay. <laughs> I want my tabule. <laughs> I find you guilty, Bishop Murray. However, your lawyer your barrister, your QC, Queen's Counselor, appointed by the Queen. Your QC has paid the price for you. His name is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So I, God the Father, as the judge, find you guilty but I sentence you to eternal freedom because of your QC, Jesus. Now, I'm walking out. I was facing the lethal injection. I was facing the rope. I was facing life imprisonment. And then in a split moment, the judge says, thank Jesus for it. What would you say or do for this Jesus? Nothing. He can't. He just gave you something that is priceless. He just gave you something that is beyond your reach, beyond your capacity. Nothing can buy what Jesus has given you. What can you say or do to thank the Lord Jesus? You'll be speechless. You'll be dumbfounded. You'll just be numb. Exactly. Because what you just received was unheard of. Yet I was guilty, but I'm free. How does that work? This is, the Lord Jesus will come and say to you, this is my mercy I died for you I took your place I received the lethal injection I receive death by hanging I receive life imprisonment for your sake this is what mercy is Wow do to people the same way what, they, what you expect to be done unto you, do to people. What you expect to be done unto you, do to people. Do you want to be mistreated? You'll say no. Well, don't mistreat others. Do you want to be hated? You'll say no. Well, don't hate others. 
Do you want to be ridiculed? Do you want to be put to shame? You'll say, no, well, don't put to shame others. That is mercy. That is mercy. And, this, and the sign of mercy is forgiveness. Lord, I'm asking you for this thing. Give me this gift for me to be able to forgive my, those who's gone, who, who gone against me. Give me this gift so I can forgive those who have hurt me. And when I say forgive, I don't mean that you need to live with them, depending on which person that is. I'm talking about forgiveness, not living. So don't mix it. Well, if it's your father and you're living at home with your father, then you, you have to remain living at home with your father. Don't say, Father, I forgive you, but I'm not going to live with you. Get out of it. You know who is the person that truly has forgiven? That will never remind you of what you've done in the past. Now that is a person who has truly forgiven you. This is Jesus Christ. He will never remind you what you've done in the past, no matter how ugly that past was. And a piece of advice to couples at home. You know when uh, my beautiful daughter because women, they never forget. Men are, to somewhat degree, are... Huh? Because logic can be dumb. Feelings and emotions are kind of very expensive. That's why men are kind of dumb to somewhat degree. In a nice way, I mean, they're dumb. In, in a nice way. Because men... They will create World War III. After five minutes, they will, they'll never forget, they will never remember what they've done. You know, like the fish, the memory of a fish is five seconds. After five seconds, you can catch the fish again, and you can catch it again. You catch the fish, you throw it in the water. Five seconds later, you can, you can catch it again. She forgets. Huh? I don't know. So men are like that. Men forget. forget. Women. Hi, hi. You say one thing, she will say, stop, let me replay the tape, <laughs> which I have taken from the archives. <laughs> the date says 950 AD. Some of them say 950 BC. And I'll put the tape. I don't love you. You see? Remember you said this to me. You don't love me. But honey, I said a gazillion I love you after that. No. This one. So my darling daughter, my sweetheart daughter, my beloved daughter, when your dumb husband says one thing, just let it go. And when you let it go, he will get the shock of his life. For the first time, my president let... She didn't sentence me to life imprisonment. He will do everything for you. He will wash the dishes. He will cook. Even if he doesn't know how to cook, he will law, mow the lawn. He will do everything. He'll take you shopping. He'll buy you a diamond ring without asking for it. We need to forgive because when you forgive someone, you have no idea what you do to them. You will, you will break them in order to make them. Oh, blessed are you when you save a soul. Wow. You have no idea what this means to the Lord Jesus. Do you understand? The Lord 
paid the price for every human being, everyone. I'll tell you this true story and I'll leave you definitely with it. And I'm sorry for taking so long, not. <laughs> brother and sister, the parents had moved on. The brother and sister lived together for a very long time. Two adults. One day, the brother finds a girl and marries this girl. This girl, who happens to be the wife of this brother, became the closest friend and the best sister to his sister you could ever ask for. The sister-in-laws became more than sisters. So the sister to this brother, she knew everything about his wife. And obviously being his sister, she knew her brother very well because all their life they lived together. After a few years in marriage, the sister finds out the brother is cheating on his wife. And he confesses to his sister. He confesses. Because she, she finds out and she confronts him behind closed doors. And he admitted and he said, yes, I've done it. When she used to sit with her sister-in-law and the sister-in-law, one day, she came to her and he said, Sister, yes, darling, I don't know. I can see there is changes in my husband. He wasn't like this before. I have this suspicion in me and it's eating me within. I think he may have someone else in his life. The sister would say to her, don't you ever misjudge your husband who is my brother. Do you know, you search the entire globe, you will never find a better man than my brother. He is a saint. There is no one better than him. Trust me. I'm not saying because he's my brother, but I'm saying it wholeheartedly. Be at peace. My brother, your husband, is the best of the best. And when she goes to him behind closed doors, no one sees, no one hears, she would shred her brother, shred him to pieces. How dare you, you do to your wife and you treat her in this way. Do you realize God has given you a saint? You are, you do not deserve such a woman. Shame on you. She would give him the third degree burns. But at the same time, she would beg the Lord to have mercy on her brother, touch his heart for his own sake and his soul's salvation. Twenty years, she hid the secret from her sister-in-law. And twenty years never ceased praying for her brother, for her brother's salvation. 20 years and one day the brother wakes up totally a different man he gives up and he remained with his wife marriage was salvaged by this sister because she hid that secret 1st Corinthians 13 Love covers a lot of errors. Wow. Love covers a lot of errors. So beautiful when we cover a lot of errors of others. Don't reveal them to the world. Be merciful. Be merciful if you want the Lord Jesus to be merciful on you. Be merciful, my beloveds. Let's bow our heads. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Our good God and full of mercy, our good God and full of mercy, 
whose grace and mercy is poured upon all. Pour, my Lord, the compassion of the delightfulness of your love upon your servants, and again transform them in the hope of renewal to the life of repentance. Renew in them your Holy Spirit, by whom they are sealed for the day of salvation. Purify them by your compassion from all flesh and spiritual blemishes. And assure the hope of their faith by the aid of your grace, and instill the walks of their behavior in the paths of righteousness. Please them along with the saints in your kingdom by the assurance of the hope of their faith in the adoption as your children and in the joy of your absolving mysteries. Empower them by the aid of your mercies to observe your commandments and fulfill your will, to confess, worship, and praise your holy name, the Lord of all, Father and Son, and Holy Spirit forever. Amen. May the Lord Jesus bless you, guide you, and protect you all the days of your life, my beloveds. Amen. Amen. Jesus is beautiful. He's stunning. Love the Lord. He is worthy of every drop of love we give to Him. Love the Lord. He is stunning. You will never find anyone like Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Never. Never. He is one of a kind. There's only one Jesus, born of Mary. Ah, the love of my life, Mother Mary, my sweetheart. And people can say whatever they want to say. Mary will always be the love of my life. Mama, I adore you. Mama, I adore you. Mama, I adore you. And I worship your son. I adore you. And I worship your son. Because your son is God revealed in the flesh. Thank you, Mama for giving us your son. And thank you, God, for giving us mom, Mary, Maryam. Maybe you've heard this before, but the proper pronunciation is Maryam, not Mary, Maryam. That's the proper name, Hebrew, Aramaic, Syriac, original. And the word Maryam comes, derives from the word Mura, now the word Mura is a shrub. That shrub, when you break that piece of wood and you put it on your tongue, it is the most bitter taste you could ever taste in your life. That shrub is so bitter beyond, beyond, beyond swallowing it. But when you put that piece of wood, which is so bitter called Mura, when you put it on fire, it brings out the, mag the ma most magnificent fragrance you could ever smell. Maryam derives from the word Mura, the bitter shrub. But when that bitter shrub is burnt on fire, releases absolutely stunning fragrance. Maryam, the person Maryam, when she was burnt with all the trials, and the tribulations which she endured throughout her life on earth, all those heavy, heavy tribulations, obstacles, and persecutions, those were like that fire. She got burned by those trials, and the more she was burned, the more she smelled stunning. 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 What a fragrance Maryam is. But all made possible by the source of fragrance, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Wow. Wow. Beautiful connection. And Maryam is very merciful beyond our intellect very merciful oh she runs but you need to understand how to approach the lord to give you his mom my beloved the beard went white not for just like that 
there is a reason for this beard to go white. Sometimes I flick through some old pictures. When I say old, Lord, not in 950 BC. <laughs> like a few years back, I looked at the beard and I said, man, that was black. This is what happens when you live with Assyria. No, just kidding. <laughs> you know, live mercy. And then I challenge you if Christ is not going to be vividly clear in your life. I challenge you. Live mercy. God bless you. God keep you safe and sound and reward you abundantly here on earth and more so in heaven forevermore. Amen.